Hello and welcome to today's lecture on distributed memory multiprocessors. Uh, you may recall that we have two basic models, one is known as uniform memory access or this is also uh, used for symmetric multiprocessor where there is a shared memory connected to the bus and each processor has equal access time. And on the other hand, there is another model known as NUMA model. NUMA stands for non-uniform memory access and in this NUMA model, uh, you can see that you have got separate processors and the memory is not shared, it is not common. So, it is being distributed. So, uh, in this case memory is distributed that is the reason why it is called distributed memory multiprocessor and uh, each processor is having a, uh, having a part of the main memory with it associated with it connected through a bus and then each of them is, uh, is connected through the network. So, uh, uh, we have seen the limitations of symmetric multiprocessors in my last class, we have seen there is a centralized resource in the system becomes a bottleneck. So, whenever there is a centralized uh, resource and which is used by all the uh, processors, then it becomes a bottleneck. So, in the in case of your uh, symmetric multiprocessor, we have seen that shared bus is a bottleneck because uh, as the speed of the processors uh, is increased or if the number of processors is increased then the traffic on the bus increases and as a consequence it puts a limit on the number of processors that can be connected uh, to the uh, to, uh, to this uh, bus. So, uh, uh, and uh, the, the traffic there are two types of traffic we, ha we have seen the bus must support both normal traffic that means when the uh, when you are reading memory I mean when there is a cache miss you have to transfer data from the main memory to the cache that is your normal uh, traffic you can say. On the other hand there will be other traffics because to maintain coherence. So, those are known as coherence traffic and as the speed of processors increases the number of processors that can be supported reduces as I have already mentioned because uh, the bus has a uh, limited bandwidth. So, with the limited bandwidth the number of processors that can be supported is uh, restricted. Now, question arises how the designer can increase the memory bandwidth. So, the memory bandwidth uh, can if the memory bandwidth can be increased then the number of processors in the system can be increased. How can it be done? One possible approach is to use multiple buses. So, whenever you use multiple buses then obviously, the, 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 the traffic on the bus uh, on each bus reduces and that may help you to increase the number of processors. Another alternative is to use uh, multiple physical banks. So, whenever we have already discussed the use of multiple physical banks and whenever you have got multiple physical banks then uh, obviously, the reading from different, uh, from different banks can be done uh, separately and that will also help you to increase the number of processors. So, uh, this is these are the limitations. So, in search of better alternative, uh, we have uh, uh, another new technique has emerged that is known as uh, uh, directly based protocol where you have got distributed memory. So, in a distributed memory system, uh, we shall use a, a special type of protocol uh, which is which is known as directory based protocol. So, uh, we have seen in symmetric multiprocessor since it is a sharing a bus uh, all the protocols are bus based. So, uh, by monitoring the bus uh, the any transaction that has taken place can be identified a processor can recognize that and appropriate action is taken. On the other hand we shall see uh, the in this directory based protocol it is somewhat different and this is an alternative to the snoop based uh, coherence protocol. So, we have to in any case we have to maintain that the cache coherence and uh, with using this protocol we shall be able to do that. And basic motivation behind this directory based protocol is that it can be used to reduce the bandwidth demands in, in, a, uh, in a centralized shared memory machine. 
So, a directory keeps the state of every block that may be cached. That means, uh, I am uh, we are telling about directory based. What do you really mean by directory? Directory is a kind of database uh, which uh, that is uh, which keeps the state of every block that may be cached, that may be uh, transferred from the main memory to the cache. And uh, information like which cache have copies of the block, whether a particular cache is dirty and so on or whether it is shared by uh, more than one processor. So, all this information ought to be stored in the directory uh, for proper management of the <coughs> and to avoid cache coherence. So, the amount of information is proportional to the product of the number of memory blocks and the number of processors. So, here uh, we have seen that uh, memory will have large number of blocks and for each block we have to maintain some uh, information and similarly for each block corresponding to each processor we have to maintain some database. That is why the amount of information will be proportional to the product of the number of blocks into the number of processors in the system. And to prevent the directory to become a bottleneck, the directory is distributed along the memory. Now, uh, as the, uh, as the uh, uh, size of the memory increases or in other words number of blocks increases and as the number of processors increases, particularly in a distributed memory architecture, the number of processors can be hundreds, it may be 100, 200 and more. So, it will be a large number of processors contrary to uh, symmetric memory multiprocessors where you can have at most few dozens of processors, here it will be few hundreds of processors and as a consequence the size of the directory is quite big, pretty big. So, uh, if you uh, the where do we store that directory? So, what can be done just like we have distributed the memory, we can also distribute the directory and that is what is being done different directory uh, to prevent directory to become a bottleneck the directory is distributed along with the memory. And different uh, it has another advantage different directory uh, directory accesses go to different uh, sorry uh, direct goes to different directories. That means, the uh, since it is uh, uh, distribu uh, distributed, so uh, reference to a particular directory will be will go uh, to a particular place and uh, when there is another reference it will go to another place. So, it will help you reduce the traffic uh, on a particular uh, bus. So, we shall this, uh, see this in detail as we discuss the uh, protocol. So, this is the basic model you can say that NUMA, NUMA computer uh, non-uniform memory access computer and where we can use uh, directory based solution. So, you can see each processor along with the cache, memory and I O, uh, each of them is a autonomous system. By autonomous I mean each of them can function independently, each of them may be having its own operating system that is one advantage in this. So, and then we have a directory. So, we have a directory and then uh, that directory is maintaining information about the uh, different things that I have mentioned and each of them is connected through a interconnection network. So, through the interconnection network they are connected and then uh, this memory uh, is being shared uh, and uh, um, by that I mean uh, there is a single, single logical address space. And of course, there is multiple physical space. So, as we have seen uh, here, the memory there is uh, the memory is available in the in is provided to each of the processors. So, what can be done? Uh, say, for example, uh, this is the address. The higher order bits can be used to signify. Uh, the memory associated with a particular processor. So, memory associated with a particular processor.
So, uh, if you have got 4 processors, 2 bits will be sufficient 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 or if you have got more than uh, in, in case of uh, this NUMA model, we have seen the number can be 100. So, uh, the number of bits that will be required will be dependent on the number of processors and in the remaining bits can be used uh, to reference the memory uh, within, uh, within that particular uh, uh, mem memory block in a associated with the processor. That is how uh, the memory is distributed in this particular case. <coughs> Now, uh, in NUMA computers, the messages have long latency because uh, we have it has the information has to go through the uh, interconnection network and uh, broadcast is inefficient because all messages have explicit responses. So, uh, and uh, main memory controller uh, has to keep track of it, which, uh, which processors are having cast copies of uh, which memory locations and so on. So, and on a write only need to inform the users, not everyone. That means, where the writing is taking place and who are the users of that particular uh, block, they are to be informed, but uh, not everyone. And similarly, uh, whenever uh, on a dirty read, uh, whenever a read is occurring uh, <coughs> and, uh, and that is already uh, modified by a processor. It, that information has to be forwarded to the owner that means owner means who is reading it so i shall uh, go into the details of that uh, particularly uh, this protocol that will be used this directory based protocol is very similar to snoopy protocol just like uh, we have seen there are three states with the help of which you can explain the protocol the way the reading writing and other things that the access is taking place. In this case, the three states are shared, uncached and exclusive. So, whenever uh, a particular uh, cache block will be in the shared state, if one or more processors have data uh, and memory is up to date. That means, uh, that, means that uh, a more than one processor uh, is has uh, have copied it and memory is also up to date. That means, the same copy not only is present in the memory, but also in the cache of more than one processor. Then we shall say, say it is shared and uh, also it is updated. That means, uh, all the copies are identical. Then uncached, no processor has data not valid in cache. That means, in case of uncached, the data is only present in the main memory and not uh, no processor has cast it and as a consequence uh, i mean uh, when a, whenever a processor has to read it it has to read from the main memory then uh, the uh, third state is exclusive where one processor has the data and uh, in, in such a case what happens the memory uh, from the main memory it is transferred to the cache of a particular processor and whenever it is transferred to a particular processor and whenever it modifies it, the, that processor becomes the exclusive user of that particular block of data. So, uh, exclusive state corresponds to one processor is the owner of the data and memory may be out of date. Out of date means in the main memory, uh, the modification that has taken place in the, uh, in the cache memory has not yet been uh, uh, written back. So, uh, to keep the protocol simple, uh, we must keep the protocol simple, but it must track which processors have data when uh, in the shared state, usually implemented using bit vector. That means, suppose you have got uh, 8 processors, corresponding, corresponding to 8 processors you can have 8 bits. So, if a particular uh, say this correspond to uh, 0th processor, this correspond to 8th uh, processor. So, whenever a particular processor uh, copies that data, that bit is modified to 1. So, so, in this way, if there is 1 present in more than uh, 1 bit, that signifies that the same copy of data is, uh, is possessed by more than 1 processor, processor and as a consequence, uh, it will be in the shared state.
and this bit this bit vector signifies uh, which processor uh, will be having the copy. So, writes to non exclusive data uh, that means, whenever uh, a particular processor tries to write a data uh, which is uh, which is non exclusive it is not in the exclusive state then write miss will occur and it will uh, it will uh, it will uh, change the state from uh, exclusive to uh, i mean uh, write miss will occur then it will be become exclusive because after the modification is done then uh, state will change to exclusive. So, from non exclusive to it will change to exclusive. Non exclusive means it can be shared or in uncached state and if it tries to write, write will be miss the uh, write miss will be generated on the bus and then the state will change to exclusive and processor blocks uh, until access completes. So, uh, uh, here some kind of uh, you know it is not a shared bus. So, uh, some kind of serialization is necessary because one operation has to be completed. So, that is why the processor blocks until access completes that means, it does not allow other processors to access it and assume messages uh, received and acted upon in order sent. So, that means, uh, when a particular message is sent then that appropriate action for that message is uh, performed only then uh, other messages uh, will be uh, will be uh, received and uh, appropriate action will be taken. So, this is the kind of serialization is necessary and this is important because uh, uh, bus is not shared and latency is more. <coughs> so, no bus and do not have uh, do not want broadcast obviously, since there is no shared bus there is no possibility of broadcast interconnect no longer single arbitration point because uh, since uh, it is not a bus our bus arbitration cannot be done uh, with the help of this interconnect network. It can be a point to point network or it can be interconnection network having multiple paths. So, this, this, uh, this single arbitration point does not exist and all messages have explicit responses. That means, in case of uh, uh, bus based system. So, it is a kind of broadcast on the bus and as a consequence all the processors uh, and uh, will be will uh, listen it, but in this particular case that is not so it has to be explicit, uh, explicit uh, I mean for, for all mess each or each and every message will have explicit responses. Now, uh, in this directory based protocol uh, you will find that there exists three different types of nodes. One is local node where a request originates. So, uh, uh, local node will generate an request for read, write. Uh, on the other hand, home node where the memory location and address resides. That means, uh, home node is where the memory, memory location and address is resides and from where data has to be read. And another node is there that is remote node has a copy of the cache block where uh, whether exclusive or shared. So, that means, remote node uh, is the place where the uh, where the, co the, the a copy of the cache is already present and it may be either in the exclusive state or in the shared state. And uh, you can have a number of processors. So, uh, P uh, specifies the processor number and uh, whenever transaction will take place the address of the memory has to be specified and that A is the address. So, the, the whenever you will see then the in, the in the messages the P and A processor number and address will be mentioned for different purposes. And this is the list of possible messages. So, for example, read miss, read miss means that uh, data is not present in the cache memory and the processor is trying to read and source can be I mean the source it is generated by the local cache and destination is home directory and message will contain the processor number and address. Then write miss again the source is uh, source of the message is local cache and destination is home directory home directory means we have seen the di diagram. Uh, 
So, this is the directory and is the processor. So, this is the home directory of this processor and uh, other directories are remote directories of this processor. <coughs> then uh, write miss the uh, it is uh, the this uh, source is again local cache generated by uh, so, uh, sorry in invalidate it is generated by the home directory uh, and destination is remote cache. So, whenever uh, data is modified uh, and it was having a copy in uh, then the uh, then then it has to be invalidated and the message content is address invalidated at the shared copy of data at a. So, in that in that address that data has to be invalidated then fetch again the source is home directory uh, because data is not present in the memory. So, it has to be fetched and from the remote cache it has to come and the address will be generated by a data is sent to home directory data to be sent to the home directory and status to uh, remote cache will be modified to shared. And then again fetch or invalidate again the source is home directory and destination will be remote cache and message contents will be address a and data will be sent to the home directory and it will invalid action will be invalidate the block. Then data value copy, uh, data value will be copied uh, in, the, in, in the local cache. So, in this case uh, the source is the home directory and destination is local cache and data will be uh, message will contain the data which will be copy, uh, which will be uh, written into the local cache. So, return data value from the home directory and data write back again the source is uh, remote cache in this particular case and destination is the home directory and the message will contain the address and data and the function will be uh, write back a data value for address A. So, these are the possible messages that will be generated in this directory based protocol and let us see uh, and, uh, and uh, <coughs> what will be the, uh, the states, what are the different states that we shall mention. So, states identical to Snoopy case, transactions are very similar, we have already discussed about this Snoopy based protocol. We shall see the states are identical and transactions are similar, however, they are little different transactions cause, caused by read misses, write misses, invalidates, data requests. So, uh, transitions will occur from one state to another because of these, mes uh, because of these messages. <coughs> and it will generate read miss and write miss message to home directory and write misses that were broadcast on the bus for snooping. So, in this case that will not happen explicit invalidate and data fetch request are to be used in case of directory based protocol. Note that on a write a cache block is bigger, so need to be read the full cache block. So, that means whenever you are performing a write it will uh, although you will be writing on, on a word, but uh, a block consists of several words. So, entire block has to be transferred all the words and, uh, and you have to read it then modification can be done. So, this is the, this is the uh, <coughs> uh, state transition diagram state machine for CPU request for each memory block. So, this is the uh, state machine for CPU request for each memory block and uh, assuming that initially invalid state is in the memory. So, let us uh, gradually build up and see how it exactly happens. <coughs> so, initially you have got it is in the invalid state, invalid state means that data is not present in the cache and uh, uh, it is also in not in shared state. So, CPU can uh, I mean the, the, the uh, CPU can generate a uh, generate a message that is known as CPU read. So, whenever CPU read is uh, generated it will lead to uh, it will send read miss message to 
to the directory. That means that uh, in, in response to this the reading of data will take place and obviously uh, it will change state from invalid to invalid to shared invalid to shared and in this case it is read only. Now, whenever it is in the uh, shared state uh, in uh, okay, let us first complete the invalid state from the invalid state it can also perform CPU write. So, whenever it tries to CPU write then it will send uh, write miss uh, to home directory and the state of the cache memory will change to exclusive because after it has performed the writing. So, it will become exclusive. So, from the invalid state there are two transactions uh, I mean uh, two transitions one because of uh, CPU read another because of CPU write and whenever CPU read occurs it goes to shared state whenever CPU write occurs it goes to exclusive state. Now, when it is in the shared state then if you perform continuous reading that means CPU read or write whatever it occurs CPU read hit. So, CPU read hit means it will uh, remain in the same state there will be no change after the uh, data is taken to the cache memory it can continue to read without changing the status. And similarly, whenever uh, whenever it perform CPU read miss then it will send uh, it will send uh, read miss <coughs> and it will remain in the same state because uh, it will read it and then it will perform uh, it will remain it will uh, it will continue to uh, 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 I mean uh, send read miss and it will remain in this particular state. Now, uh, from this state it will go to uh, I think CPU read miss and whenever it performs CPU write what happens? Then it does CPU write. So, when CPU write occurs again it goes to exclusive state. Uh, so, it will send uh, write miss a message to the home directory and it will change to exclusive state. So, from this uh, shared state these are the possible transactions CPU read, uh, CPU read hit, CPU read miss and CPU write. Now, whenever it is in the exclusive state that means, the, the cache is present uh, I mean only in that particular processor it, and it is in the exclusive state. So, in this case it can perform uh, CPU read, CPU read heat. Uh, so, it will remain in the same state it will continue to read or CPU write heat. There will be no change of state because it is already in the exclusive state the CPU is free to read uh, the data or write into the data when it is in the exclusive state. Now, uh, uh, now what can happen the CPU write miss occurs and it is in the exclusive state then obviously, it will send uh, data write back. Uh, and uh, write miss to home directory and it will remain in this state. So, uh, CPU write miss means uh, the data is not here, but it was in the exclusive state. So, it will remain in that exclusive state however, data write back has to occur and, uh, and, and it will send the write miss to home directory and accordingly the data will be transferred. Uh, to that cache and a modification will be done by the processor and it will remain in this state. So, it will it will not change. Now, comes to uh, <coughs> two more states 
from exclusive to so from exclusive to it will go to say it performs uh, CPU write CPU write is there CPU so it, it is a, in case of fetch in case of fetch it will send uh, data write back uh, to the home directory so and then it will go to shared state and last is last one is CPU read miss. So, whenever CPU read miss occurs, then it is not in the it will go from exclusive state to shared state and, uh, and it will generate the uh, uh, it will generate the read miss uh, 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 the uh, write back message to the read miss to home directory and it will see, uh, switch from exclusive to the shared state. So, this is the these are the different transactions that will occur which is shown in this particular diagram and this is the situation where state machine from CPU requests for each memory block that is occurring uh, and uh, whenever it is in different states and how this state transition occurs that I have discussed uh, uh, one after the other. Now, uh, let us see. Okay. So, uh, I have discussed the uh, same state and structure as the now the con consider the diagram of the directory. That means, the directory also will maintain a uh, finite state machine and uh, what the, the states of that and the transitions for individual cache will be same in case of the uh, directory also and the memory controller will perform the following actions update of the directory state send messages to satisfy request, track all copies of memory block and all indicates an action also indicates an action that updates the sharing state, set sharers as well as sending a message. So, let us see uh, <coughs> the various situations. Now, in this case you can see uh, the directory can receive three messages. What are the three messages? Number one message is read miss. Uh, write miss or data write back. So, these are the three messages that will be received by the, by the directory uh, state machine and directory ma state machine again will, will remain in three different states. Let us see, uh, the three different states are one is uncached. data is not yet uncached or it can be in shared read only and third state is exclusive. So, these are the three states and now whenever it is in the uncached state that means a particular block has not yet been transferred to the cache memory and there is a, a read miss. A read miss occurs and whenever a read miss occurs it will send a message uh, and send a data value reply So, data is tend, sent and it switches to <coughs> shared states. So, in such a case the, the you have to maintain a list where sharers will include this, this processor, the processor which has to which it has been sent that processor's name has to be in, in will go to the uh, will be maintained in the sharers list. So, this is sharers will be equal to p and it will go to the shared state. And uh, when it is in the shared state uh, uh, from the uncased state, it can also go to the exclusive state by write miss. And in this case also it will send data value reply 
that means the directory will send the data value reply uh, message and uh, CRRs will be again P that processors uh, will be entered in the CRRs list. So, these are the two transitions that will occur whenever uh, it is in the uncached state uh, and then uh, let us see when it is in the shared state the, the directory uh, can, can, can receive a message like uh, read miss. When a read miss occurs then uh, it will send data value reply as reply. And also the CRS list <coughs> will be updated, it will plus, it will update P. So, this is what will happen in case of a read miss. Now, let us consider <coughs> when there is a write miss. When there is a write miss, then it will send invalidate signal invalidate message to CRRs. So, to, to all the processors it has to go and uh, then CRRs list will be CRRs list will be having only P because it is in the exclusive control of P that is why uh, it will have the only value and it will send the invalidated message and it will send uh, data value reply. Reply message. Then we have got another uh, whenever it is in the exclusive state it can go from exclusive to shared state whenever there is a read miss. Whenever there is a read missed and in that case that CRL list will have uh, will add the P uh, which is trying to read. So, this is the list of processors and it will send fetch, fetch the data and uh, it will the, the the directory will send data value reply reply message to remote cache so uh, this is this is the case whenever it, you are using write back policy and the last one is in this case write miss when write miss occurs it remains in the exclusive state so the crs list will be having p and <coughs> it will send uh, fetch or invalidate and also send data value reply message to remote cache. So, these are the various transactions. So, and finally, there is another one. Uh, when it is in the exclusive state, when the there is a data write back. So, in this case also the CRR CRR list will be empty and it will perform uh, write back block will be transferred, it will be uncached. So, this, these are the various uh, transitions that will occur in case of uh, uh, the directory state machine in response to uh, different uh, messages like read miss, write miss and uh, data write back 
coming from the processors. Okay. Now, let us consider an example. Uh, messages sent to directory causes two actions update the directory. So, we have already discussed about these things when read me occurs, write me occurs and when it is in the shared state, uh, uh, block is in the shared state we have discussed in detail <coughs> uh, and when it is in the exclusive state uh, when read me occurs, data write back occurs we have discussed those things and uh, in response to write me what will be done these are again we have uh, discussed in detail. Now, let us consider an example uh, where different actions are taken uh, and in response to that what is done by different processors, what is done by the different interconnect that is your interconnect bus, what is done in the directory and what is done in the memory. So, a different uh, different things that happens is mentioned here. <coughs> so, P 1 write 10 to address A 1. So, a processor P 1 is writing some data uh, in uh, and the address corresponding address is A 1. And uh, so far as the processor P 1 is concerned, the state is exclusive because it has written data. And in that address A 1 uh, the value 10 will be written. And whenever this is being done, uh, uh, then the, the corresponding bash actions will be since it is writing, write miss will be on the interconnect pass and the message that has been sent is by P 1 and uh, at the corresponding address is A 1. This the, uh, uh, the then the corresponding data uh, data read that occurs uh, data write back uh, data write back occurs is uh, corresponding to P1 and A1 and the directory protocol and the directory will uh, have the message the corresponding state will be uh, address A1 the state will be exclusive and processor corresponding is P1. So, this is the sequence of event that will take place in response to processor P 1 writing 10 into A 1. Now, whenever the same processor reads the data uh, of A 1, then what happens? So, in this, uh, in this particular case, as you can see there is no change in state because it was already in the exclusive state, it will simply read it. As you have already seen. It, uh, there is no change of state and from uh, the processor will generate the address and it will read it from the cache memory. Then P 2 whenever another processor tries to read from the same address then what will happen let us see. So, in this case uh, it was uh, earlier in the exclusive state of processor P 1. Now, uh, it will switch from exclusive to shared state because the processor is uh, reading it and it will be also present in the cache memory of uh, processor P 2. So, the state will change to shared correspondingly the processor P 1 also will change the state from exclusive to shared and, uh, and the value that will be present here is 10 same thing for P 1 and P 2 uh, address is same and on the interconnect the read, read message uh, that is being sent is P 2 corresponding to P 2 and address is A 1 and it will be fetched from the uh, processor P 1 uh, and address A 1 and the value is 10 and the uh, data reply that occurs is P 2 A 1 and 10. So, <coughs> these are the that the uh, interconnect or bus uh, that, that will be the directory will respond in this way and sorry in the directory will be responding uh, with A 1 and it is it will be in the shared state and P 1 and P 2 are having the copy it has to maintain the list of sharers. So, list of sharers are here P 1 and P 2 and value is 10. Now, P 2 is writing uh, uh, writing uh, in the same address some other value. So, in this case what will happen uh, the P 2 will write and uh, in this case uh, it will become the exclusive under the exclusive control of uh, P 2 and the value is changed and there will be corresponding changes on the I mean messages on the bus interconnect 
and on the directory we will uh, we'll also uh, will be ch correspondingly will change the state a 1 earlier it was a 1 uh, address was a 1 it was in the shared state and p 1 and p 2 were the list of sharers, but in this case say state is ex exclusive and only it is present in p 2 and value and and memory value remains the same 10, because it is not yet been uh, written into the uh, memory, it is only present in the cache memory of P2. And it will be invalidated in processor P1. So, processor P1 will have the state of invalidate uh, and, uh, and for P2 it is exclusive and so on. Now, P2 writes 40 to A2. So, another writing is taking place by P2. Let us see what will happen in this case. Uh, so, uh, it will invalidate that interconnect will generate invalidate P 1 A 1, uh, then write message P 2 A 2 and write back P 2 A 1 20 uh, and address is and in this case the exclusive it will go to the exclusive state of processor P 2, because it has written it was already in the exclusive state, but uh, the modi value has been modified. So, it will go to the uh, remain in the exclusive state, however, the address and data values are changing and in the directory also uh, the same thing is happening A 2 it will remain in the exclusive state and processor which is uh, which is uh, will be in the sharer list is P 2 and data value is 0. So, uh, this is how uh, it has been assumed that A 1 and A 2 map to the same cache block. If it is in the different cache block, then of course, uh, there will be a cache miss that has not happened here, because they belong to the we have assumed that that 10, 20 and 40 all belong to this A 1 and A 2 they belong to the same cache block and as a consequence there was no uh, uh, cache miss. Uh, and, uh, only the state of the uh, process uh, is changing from exclusive to uh, sharing, share, shared or uh, and like that. <coughs> now, uh, we shall discuss some of the implementation issues in directory based protocols. So, when the number of processors are large, directory becomes a bottleneck as I have told, because the size of the directory is proportional to uh, the number of uh, blocks into the number of processors. So, the directories can be distributed among different memory modules. So, earlier we have seen uh, it was in the associated with the same memory, but now what can be done it you can divide it into separate memory modules and different directory accesses go to different locations, because since they are in different memory modules then different directory accesses will go to different locations leading to lesser traffic on the uh, on the bus corresponding to the memory. Okay, here are two examples uh, illustrating what kind of communication overhead that occurs. Uh, so, let us assume that an application is running on 32 node multiprocessor and it incurs a latency of 400 nanosecond to handle a reference read write to memory. That means, uh, uh, the 40 nanosecond is necessary to read from the memory and processor clock rate is 1 gigahertz and instruction per cycle is 2. That means, 2 nanosecond is ne needed whenever it is in the cache, but whenever you have to read it from the main memory, then the time needed is 400 nanosecond. So, it is much longer. Now, how much faster will be the computation if there is no communication, communication means there is no communication with the memory versus if 0.2 percent of instructions involve reference to memory locations. So, uh, you have to compare the, uh, the, uh, the computation time uh, for the two different situation and compare it. So, uh, in this case CPI is equal to 0.2, because uh, you know instructions per cycle is 2. So, CPI is 0.2, effective C CPI uh, with 0.2 uh, percent remote references. So, so, whenever you are performing reading from the memory, there will be remote references 
so the CPI will change to uh, effective CPI will become best CPI plus memory uh, request rate into memory request cost and we have already seen that effective CPI with 0.2 percent remote reference will be 0 0.5 this 0 0.5 plus 0 0.002 because it was 2 percent reference and 400 nanosecond is the uh, access time of the main memory. So, uh, this will give you 0 0.5 into uh, this will be uh, 400 into 0 0.002 it will become 0 0.8 so 1.3. So, uh, uh, a program having no memory references will be uh, 1 minus 1 by 1 1.3 into 100 percent that means 23 percent faster. So, whenever uh, a 2.2 percent memory access is taking place it is becoming pretty slow as you can see it is becoming 23 for uh, 5, uh, 23 percent first uh, I mean uh, slower you can say or uh, whenever there is no memory reference it is 23 per percent faster. So, uh, the, the CPI is changing from uh, 1 to 1 1.3 sorry from 0 0.5 to 1 1.3. So, this is the situation. Now, consider another example again uh, it is uh, an application is running on a 32 node uh, uh, distributed shared memory. In this case it is a distributed shared memory situation it incurs a latency of 400 nanosecond to handle a reference to a remote memory and processor clock rate is 1 gigahertz IPC is 2. Now, how much faster will be the computation on a multiprocessor system compared to the uh, distributed shared memory of 0.2 percent of the instructions involved reference to a remote memory assume uh, local memory references only. So, the in this case effective CPI uh, with 0.2 percent remote memory refer remote reference is equal to basic CPI plus remote request rate into remote request cost. So, that 100 nanosecond, 1000 nanosecond is not mentioned here. So, in this case effective CPI will become equal to 0.5 plus 0 0.002 into 400 and uh, into 400,000 nanosecond, 1000 nanosecond because uh, this is the remote request cost. So, remote request cost is substantially more compared to uh, uh, when it, uh, whenever it is read from the local memory as was in the situation in the previous case. So, it will become 0.8 plus 800 is equal to 800.5 and so multiprocessor would be uh, having uh, uh, 8.800.5 8, by 1.3 is equal to 658 times faster. So, in the previous case we have seen the CPI was uh, 1.3 whenever it is uh, read from the uh, from from the uh, local memory, uh, but in this case it is from the remote memory leading to uh, CPI of 802 800.5. So, uh, this is uh, the previous one is much faster and performance figures of NUMA may be worse if we take data dependency and synchronization aspects into consideration. Without taking this data dependency and synchronization aspects into con consideration, this is the situation and if you take them into account, it will be more. So, with this uh, we have come to the end of today's lecture. So, in, the in today's lecture we have discussed about the distributed uh, shared memory architecture and we have discussed the directory based protocol for overcoming the cache coherence problem that arises whenever uh, a shared memory is used uh, in, uh, in a distrib memory, distributed memory environment. Thank you.